going to be looking at an object moving in a circle. The angular displacement of this object would be the, the angle it turns through, and this is measured in radians. Mathematically, this angular displacement, theta, is the arc angle, and arc angle equals the arc length, which in this case is s, the distance travelled, divided by the radius of the circle. If the object completes a revolution, then the distance travelled will be the circumference of the circle, which is equal to 2 pi r. If we substitute for s into the equation for angular displacement, then you see that the angular displacement will equal 2 pi for a complete revolution. So 2 pi in radians is equivalent to 360 degrees. The definition of the radian is it's the angle subtended at the centre of a circle by an arc length equal to the radius of the circle. So the angle subtended is the arc angle, which we know equals the arc length, which is our distance travelled, divided by the radius. So for the angle theta to equal 1 radian, then S must equal R. The period is given by the time taken for the object to complete one revolution. And the frequency is the number of revolutions completed per unit time. So from the definition of period, you have one revolution occurring in t seconds. So that means then one divided by t revolutions will occur per second. As frequency is the number of revolutions per second, then frequency f will equal 1 divided by the time period. To determine the average speed of the object moving in a circle, we use the definition of speed, which is the distance travelled divided by the time taken. For one complete revolution, distance travelled is 2 pi r, and the time it takes is equal to a time period. If we substitute these equations for s and t into our equation for average speed, we get average speed is equal to 2 pi r divided by the time period. We're now going to be looking at the theory of circular motion and why an object follows a circular path. We're going to be considering uniform circular motion where the speed of the object is constant. However, velocity is changing because the direction of motion is changing. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity, so it also has direction. As acceleration is equal to the rate of change velocity, as velocity is changing, then the object must be accelerating. And for an object to be accelerating, there must be a resultant force acting on the object. The resultant force must act to change the direction, not the size of the velocity, because remember the size of the velocity represents the speed, which is constant. So in order to do this, the resultant force must act in a direction that is perpendicular to the velocity. That is, towards the centre of the circle. This resultant force is called a centripetal force. It's the force that gives rise to circular motion. The centripetal acceleration of the object acts in the same direction as the centripetal force, that is, towards the centre of the circle. Centripetal acceleration is given by the equation a equals b squared divided by r. 
so the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle and using resultant force equals mass times acceleration we can find the equation for centripetal force by substituting for the centripetal acceleration into our equation for resultant force. So our centripetal force equals the mass m of the object times by the speed squared of the object divided by the radius of the circle. And this force must act towards the centre of the circle for the object to follow a circular path. I'm now going to prove the equation for centripetal acceleration. You do not need to know this proof, but it's for those who are interested. So initially we have the velocity of the object which is acting vertically downwards. And then a small time later, the object has moved through an angle of theta. And so its velocity, which is always along the tangent of the circle, has moved through an angle of theta. So this angle here is representing theta. So we first need to consider the change in velocity of the object, delta v. How we find the change in velocity is to take our final velocity minus our initial velocity. So our final velocity is the v at an angle theta relative to the vertical minus our initial velocity so our initial velocity was v acting vertically downwards so minus of that the opposite of that will be v acting vertically upwards so we started here and ended here so that represents our change in velocity and you can see that change in velocity is acting towards the center of the circle. So if our change in velocity is towards the center of the circle and acceleration equals the rate of change of velocity, then our acceleration is towards the center of the circle. For small angles theta in radians, then we can say tan theta is approximately equal to theta. So tan theta equals the opposite, which is our delta v, divided by our adjacent, which is our v. So we can say then that theta is equal to delta v divided by v. We also know that theta represents our arc angle, and that is equal to the arc length which is our s, the distance travelled, divided by r, the radius of the circle. The distance travelled by the object is equal to its speed times the time taken. If we substitute the equation for distance travelled into our equation for theta, we get this and acceleration is equal to the rate of change velocity so delta v divided by delta t so if we use this equation and substitute for delta v into the equation for acceleration and we use this other equation to substitute for delta t into the equation for acceleration we get this so delta v equals theta v and delta t equals theta r divided by v. The theta is common on the top and the bottom to cancel out. So we get v divided by r divided by v, which simplifies to v squared divided by r, our equation for centripetal acceleration.